And the, the other file from Safin in the end that was made from Madeline, right? The... With, that that was yeah that was um, that was from Madeline and I guess and my Matilde. connection yeah, yeah. Matilde because I think like was it he when he goes to see her doesn't he 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 picks up her hair or something like he uh, yeah yeah he folds it in like um, I noticed only today in like a handkerchief yeah. So I don't he know gets where it, he got the hair. He gets but, it from yeah. gets it from her office somewhere or something. Or yeah, wouldn't that how how funny would that would have been if like that wasn't uh, Madeline's hair? That it was so like uh, one of her other patients, and like at the end, Bond died for nothing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. This is Jeroen, better known as Touch Bond Fan, and I'm returned here for episode three of Discussing No Time to Die. And with me once again is my good buddy, John from Haphazard Stuff. And today we are going over the Bond Girls again, this time in retrospect. <laughs> in the forecasting series, we also did uh, a Bond Girl thing. So... How excited are you for, for this little topic? I'm extremely excited. <laughs> yeah, I just this came was... back from um, watching No Time to Die a second time, just two hours ago. So it's very fresh in my mind and uh, can't wait and to dive into this one. Seeing it a second time, did you have any different reactions from it than your first time? Did you Did it grow on you like... Uh, that's what I've been hearing. You see it a second time, you yeah. like it a little more. Well, some different it, it, it really hasn't for me. I, I was expecting it. Uh, I The ending, for example, we'll get more into that later, didn't change for me much, my opinion. Um, I did notice some more details, if anything. Um, and, and speaking of the Bond girls, I really got to say, second time around as well, I think the, the Cuba scenes, the Anna de Armas moments, not just because it's her, because I happen to, to like her as an actress, but I think she's really one of the strongest aspects to this film. It's really one of the most enjoyable parts of this movie. How long ago, like you, you've been a, a Anna fan for a long time. Well, and I remember kind of, yeah. Well, but like you, what was the movie that you saw her in? You said, oh, she, she should be a Bond girl one day. Yeah, like that, that was, was War Dogs. That was War Dogs. Uh, yeah, you, sh you should watch that one. <laughs> I, I did see it. I saw it. I oh, cool. It. Um, what year was that, though? What what year was? Twenty sixteen, I think. Twenty sixteen. So it's yeah. it was it's been a while that you, right. you came came up with that and said, oh yeah, she should she should be in a Bond movie. Yeah. Yeah, and it was more of a joking jokingly fashion because there's this one shot in War Dogs where there's a close-up of, of her face when um, the the guy, uh, the actor I think is called Miles something, the, the guy that plays... Uh, Miles Teller? Yeah, Miles Teller, that's right. The guy that plays the, the, the main character in War Dogs. Um, he returns home, and there's this one scene where she opens the door and they do a close-up of her face, and you see her eyes up close, and you, you can really tell it's like a brown caramel greenish brown color that's when she really stands out i'm like wow actually she she, she should be a bond girl that, that, that i remember it was that shot that i was like wow no she, she looks uh, she looks good um and then you know like i said before there was this this scene because my 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 friend filmed me on my reaction 
during the announcement of Jamaica when that was live when oh, they did yes, the uh, yes. yeah and they announced like all the cast members before they before you saw them seated and they go like yeah David Densick uh, Remy Malik and the Armist and you see me go oh it it happened you know and and I did not know he he filmed me and I, I I'm so glad he did because we were recording some some other video project and he he secretly got the camera on to film my reaction because he knew how much of a Bond fan I was and you see me go oh yeah oh I was hoping this would happen so it's quite funny because I, I never saw it coming I was just always kind of joking about it and then it did but um all jokes aside I do feel bringing this back to no time to die she's just such a strong presence in this that's so such a you really wish she she stayed around longer really fun such a you know, now that I have it fresh in my mind, so much cool moments with her. Uh, what do you think? Um, like, how long, like, since you just saw it, how long is she on screen for? I mean, it, I think it's 10? like 15 minutes, something 15? like that, maybe 10, maybe 10. Yeah. But she isn't really it, stands out. It's like, it it's such a shame when she goes. When, like, for such short screen time that she has, she takes over the movie. For, for right. The, as soon as she shows up wasn't it at like when we were talking about the jamaica the, the announcement that day didn't she say like she had no idea who her character was she she didn't know um what she was going to be doing or anything like she didn't know how to prepare yet because she was an, a last minute addition yeah. to the cast like i guess since craig has so much pull on these movies now i guess he he must have had an influence of saying we got to get Anna for like a part or maybe it was Fukunaga or something. Yeah. But it's, but it's funny, like a last minute addition to the movie, one of the last people like, you know, like in the cast and, and so far she's like the standout. I haven't heard anything. Anyone say, Oh no, no, I don't, uh, she wasn't good. Or I, I, all I've heard was pot has no negative things. things. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It's an, you know, I'm willing to bet, I think you've mentioned this somewhere as well, and maybe in your review, but she's going to be the character that's going to be remembered fondly from this movie. She's going to she's gonna be remembered uh, for her short scene as well. I mean, she was just a secret agent, three weeks training, and uh, supposedly, and uh, she was capable, inexperienced, but capable. Um, and, and because I have it so fresh in my mind, there's also this, this cool moment where, you know, they're doing shooting, then they're at the bar, they're doing a little salute with a, a vodka, she chugs it, they could put the guns back and you know the, the music ramps up and it's it's just such a cool moment. It's uh it has everything. It, it her chucking the uh, the vodka martini, she clearly never really had such a strong drink. It's just that's fresh as well. We never really saw that stuff. Um she also I think like that whole scene in the the Cuba uh, bar and and her with the dress and the jewelry and everything, that's that's the the one piece of glamour, right? And like old school Bond kind right. of feeling in the whole the whole film. The rest is little cabins in the woods and emotional uh, t uh, discussions and all this yeah. stuff. This seems like okay. We got like the glamorous girl. We got the guns. Uh, we got to make sure to get something Bondian in there so that people don't yeah. forget they're watching James Bond. It, it's the one scene like he wears the tuxedo. You know, it's 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 one of the standout scenes in the in the whole movie. And and I think you're right. Like when people think about, they're gonna think about, oh, no time to die. What are they gonna, what are the, what are they gonna think about when, with the, about that movie? Oh, it's the movie that Bond dies and the one with Anna de Armas. Yeah. The two yeah. takeaways. Yeah. And you know, if you if you have to name one more aspect that seemed pretty Bondian, other than obviously the DB5 and stuff, it's probably that tiny shot of him um, when he's in the the rubber raft. Right after that, he goes back to London to go to oh, MI6. Yeah. yeah, you know, he gets the rubber to to reveal the uh, the Aston from the Living Daylights. He drives up to the to MI6, straightens his uh, jacket, you know, the one that Sritsky has as well, and he he yeah, walks to uh, the off. office. And that 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 tiny moment, which we obviously already saw a million times in the trailer anyway, but that's another 
Bondian moment, the sunglasses, the suit. But other than that, I mean, there isn't a, mo- a lot of glamour, you're right. When, um, when you saw the shot of him in the uh, big yellow raft, what did you immediately think of? Uh, the ending of You Only Live Twice and Fundable. It seemed like they, yeah. they were really going back to that, that late 60s period <laughs> yeah. with You Only Live Twice. I like that, though. So much of that. Yeah, and Majesties. For, for a moment, and I had the same thing today, seeing it the second time. He's in the raft. He's waiting, and you're, and it looks, it looks out of place because usually Bond is with a girl, and now he just looks miserable, like you know, he just had Felix die on him, and he's like, and it's kind of funny too the way he looks. Like some people gave them a chuckle to see him by himself in in a raft. You know, Connery's always with a naked, half naked chick next to him, yeah, and one of these things. And I, I don't know if you had this as well, but then you hear the, um, the sound of uh, the boat coming in and for a moment even though a submarine doesn't make that sound i i expected a submarine to oh, come oh yeah up. yeah just like in you only live twice it's, just like that it, ending yeah i guess they weren't going to push it that far yeah. yeah no they didn't but th- th- that was the first thing popped in my mind and i had it again today like oh no there is no submarine it's uh, it's about so like we everybody likes her you like her what if they ever um talk about like a potential because people are talking about it already uh, there's talk of a um, spin-off movie with Paloma. Would you be on board for that? You know, you'd think I would be, but I'm not for any spin-off with Bond. It's not like, you know, with Harry Potter or The Lord of the Rings or Star Wars where you, you can have this universe. I think Bond isn't necessarily big enough to to get... Don't get me wrong, she's an interesting character. I'm sure they can make an, an interesting movie around her. But I'm not up to see any spin-offs myself from any of the characters. I just want to see Bond. Um, what about you? Like, like um, remember, like you know, th- we went through that with Jinx and yeah. um, uh, Wei Lin, right? And I get like people saying, "Oh, I would have liked to see more of her in this movie." Like that, I, that's I how I do agree with that. But she was she was so entertaining and everything. Um, but it maybe it was better that like she she showed up for that short spurt and like left us wanting for more instead of hanging yeah. out and um wearing out her welcome you know maybe her character could get grading after a while who knows but she, i think it was like the perfect amount of time for um for her and she she fired on all cylinders the moment she came in on the scene and then when after she left uh, yeah, so I, I maybe maybe they used agree. her perfectly. Like her screen time was the perfect length. Yeah, I mean they did get a lot of the they ticked a lot of boxes. It's it's a funny entrance. He's like in one of these absolutely unglamorous bars, like waiting half half outside in this glamorous dress and and like uh, almost like a snack bar. Yeah, she meets up with Bond, and and you're right. From the moment she leaves, you know, she passes the cigar that's that's meant for Felix, and it's like, okay, bye, and I hope to see you around, and then that and hopefully longer next time. And that was her, and there was just so much into that, and and it's funny too. This this struck me today as well in cinema. There's this moment where, you know, Nomi comes in from the mm-hmm. roof, and she quickly uh, kidnaps the the the. Professor uh, Densick, the uh, Valdo? I just saw the movie, but I Valdo, the, Ob- yeah, 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 the the, the scientist, and yeah. you know she comes down. Uh, Mind if I cut in? And she's she's gone. And all I'm thinking is, ah, oh, no, me get out of here. I'm watching Paloma. It's mu- <laughs> it's much more interesting. And yeah, that's the thing with this this movie. It's like, like you're so into. And Bond seems to enjoy working with. It's like yeah, no, no, Bond is working with the CIA now. You know, he's with Paloma. Forget forget 007. The uh, you know, it's just that's how much presence he has. It's just, you know, I don't care about Nomi coming down, taking the scientist, and I'm happy that that you know she drives the car into the the scaffolding that, that right, drops right, down right. to uh, to get the scientist. And I'm like, yeah, good for her. You know, let let her the, let her get the scientist. You know, get so out of there. Would you say stay in your lane, the, Nomi? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, <laughs> so would you say like out of the two um, agents that we see? Between uh, Nomi and Paloma, who who is the more entertaining? Who seems the more competent? Who seems the one that you liked more? Yeah, watching? I mean that's a very suggestive question. We all know, yeah, yeah. I know. and I yeah. and I, I think 
I can't speak for everyone, but I think most people agree Paloma is just the, the more entertaining character. Yeah. Um, I do, do have to say, though, going to the topic of Nomi, beforehand we were crapping all over our expectations for Luciana Lynch, um, and I just saw it a second time. She isn't as bad, luckily, I think, yeah. as we were anticipating. I mean, there's still annoyance, annoyance I have with her character. There's still some moments where I'm like, ah, oh, you know. But that, I guess it's also because she just touches some of my personal allergies in some moments because it just pushes it. I, I had it the this, this second time, this time when the scientist goes, I could wipe out your entire right. uh, ethnicity. And she gets this moment where it's like... Uh, you know what time it is? Time to die. And he k kicks her off, and I I'm eye-rolling. Like, it's just so... How? To, to me, I at least, it's so forced oh. in typical writing. Um, but a lot I did enjoy with her. Y yes. She wasn't as grating as she came off from the initial trailers. Um, I'm not sure if that was... They were just marketing it a little wrong. Like, they were presenting her in such a bad light in those first trailers or it was like right. a miscalculation uh, or did they could they we never heard anything about like reshoots or anything like that with this right and they, yeah. they they're not going to come clean about it you just yeah we're gonna probably if if there were any reshoots then we'll read about it like in five years right um but like <clears throat> based on those those first trailers yeah she seemed like she was going to be like like we were saying like jinx 2.0 and she wasn't she wasn't no. as um, she wasn't like you said as annoying, um, but she also felt um, like pretty inconsequential to me. Like, yeah, it, it, like not even a significant character to to have in the thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's and another to you know she doesn't even seem that essential to the to the whole plot either. No. There's this moment that that got me today as well just watching it in Norway you know she she's supposed to track down Logan Ash right 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 and um Bond does all the tracking down you know he even stays a whole night in, in the cabin with, with Mick Madeline you know they wake up it turns out Logan is coming from them you know you get the whole jeep chase and then after the jeep chase Bond is the one that kills Logan Ash and then much later you know Nomi shows up I, in a car, and it's like, right. uh, you need a ride? She does the Jamaican accent joke again. I'm like, where the hell were you the whole time? Right, you know, right. Bond could have, and you're the, you're supposed to be the, the one that, that tracked Logan. This is not nothing on LaShawn. This is just the way her this was right. happened to be written, of course. But it's like, you know, it, it, she doesn't seem to have much relevance in that whole Norway thing. You know, she I just mean, picks she, Bond up. She has, like, she has, like, the, the great car and everything. Mm. We, now, all basically the car her car is there just to provide bond a lift back <laughs> yeah from the from the woods yeah and she um, does some cool driving on the airport which again seems so forced like there's no real chase but she, she does some some really sharp turning on the airport yeah. i'm like yeah okay. i mean what would with nomi what what is her standout scene in the movie to you yeah, I f that's what I said. I think that that kick is supposed to be like her big moment, or not her big moment, but one of the big moments. But honestly, to me, she doesn't really have one. Yeah. Her in her entrance is pretty interesting. I guess to, to you know some casual fans get a chuckle out of her getting the hair off, and then you know Craig doing like, uh, well, that wasn't the first thing I expected you to take off. Yeah. Yeah. That, that got a chuckle in both my viewings, but. To me, we already knew where this was going. Like she's not, she's asks for the bedroom. We already know. Oh boy, now this is where the stay in the lane thing is gonna go up. We know she's not gonna sleep with Bond, and you can right. see the casual audience is being surprised. Like, oh, it's awake, and oh, it is, he's actually a double O seven. You know, that's. <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, that's something, maybe yeah, to known them for that's a standout years. surprise, but to us it's like, yeah. Um. What about I you? Thought, Do you have a standout moment for her? That's the thing. Like, it's that's what I mean. Like when I say like she feels inconsequential, other than like, well, well we, we could talk about the little double seven jokes that get thrown back and forth. But 
right. seemed like the um, her big standout moment was like doing the jinx, actually a jinx thing when she comes down on the wire, grabs the scientist, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. leaves. Uh, then of course she loses the the scientist because uh, she she's like they. It's funny about them. Like they were saying, oh. She, we're going to create like a really strong, she's the new 007. She seems quite incompetent in comparison to like, you know, the retired bond. Right. Um, it doesn't seem like she, she's bringing too much to the table as a, a double O like even at the end on the Island, I thought it was weird and I get it. it it's James Bond's movie. So he's got to do some heroics, but like between her and bond, she has to like, get get the girl and the child off the island. I'll take care of this. And shouldn't that be Nomi's the double O, so uh, right. the real double O. So shouldn't she take care of like you know all the big business with the silo doors? So that Bond can actually leave safely with his family. Yeah. And you know, and if you want to make her, I agree with this. If you, it wouldn't be a Bond climax, but if you really want to make her this this strong, almost masculine type of well, not masculine, but you know. Capable. strong and capable um, character why not let her do the climax let her do the handle and open the missile si the silo door so that the missiles can come in like maybe do her her ultimate sacrifice but you know <laughs> even and i know it's it's it, it's a bond it, it bond is the star so he's got to like you know do a lot of the heroics but even at, like at one point on that island Nomi just guards the scientists while Bond goes running around the rest of the island. Yeah. So she's just standing there with a gun. I was like, isn't she the big uh, new 007? I mean, why, yeah. why is she just standing or, guard? And why doesn't she at least go with Bond to finish the climax? Oh, we know it's because of the writing, because Bond yeah, is supposed yeah. to find his tomb there. But it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. I, I, I didn't think like she, she came off as strong as they they probably intended like even yeah. all the, like the little immature stuff about uh oh what number what number is he gonna get what yeah what like seems like uh childish yeah like immature and um what is she worried about um so she didn't ruin the movie or anything but i i don't think like for me i i just don't think she was as um as great a revolutionary character as they probably thought they were going to make when they say, oh, this is going to be a new female 007. She and didn't that's seem the much thing. to me. I mean, this that happens a lot, doesn't it? Where they promote one character like, no, this this one is different. And then yeah, it yeah. really isn't. And she just happens to be another one. She's fine. She is, you know, yeah. she, she, like you said, she didn't turn out to be Full on Christmas Jones or Jinx or whatever, uh, you know, it's not notoriously bad. And I, speaking of her, did, did you get it as well when she reinstates the 007 number? That was another thing. Yeah. I was like, why would she do that? It just that, seems that, to make that, her yeah. weak. It's like, and then plus, that, okay, right before the big mission, you now reinstate him as 007. What was Nomi's? Did, did, was she 006 then? I mean, I, I don't understand. Two 007s running around? Like, it was kind of confusing. That, that shows didn't... you that it doesn't didn't even have relevance because they don't even mention either, even after Bond's death. Like, what number does she get now or yeah. during the mission? You know, they don't, they didn't, that's how insignificant it was. But I do have to admit, because this was so hyped in the media and we were so concerned mm -hmm. with it, a, I think they did reinstate it as an afterthought later because of the backlash. And B, even though it didn't make much sense story-wise, it did give me some relief. And today, second time, I knew she was going to reinstate it, obviously. But I do find after the reinstating, she becomes more likable. Because in the beginning, she's like, oh, I, I get why you, you shot him. And and it's like, well, you, you true... And that's what she says to Money Penny. Like, you know, oh, I get why you why you shot him. It's like oh, she yeah. she one one ups Bond. Bond one ups her back, and then she's all annoyed. Like, oh, you know, what a what a jerk. I'm like, well, you 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 just started it yourself, <laughs> and it's she's yeah. I can't stand her in the beginning. And I again, this is nothing on her acting. This is just the way she's written. 
And then later she becomes more respect. She starts respecting Bond yeah. more. She looks at Bond kissing away his, his family, and she's, she's she's respecting the whole thing, and then she becomes more likable. But yeah, um, yeah. So I I didn't. She was fine. Well, when she did give back like the 007 number, I was kind of surprised because that was one thing. Like uh, I, I talked about a while back, I said, I said, why would she give back the 007 number? Because it would just make her seem weak and um it, it seemed like pointless uh, like a pointless action to do because as we said bond doesn't care why would bond care about his double like the number that he's given like craig's bond wouldn't even care he wouldn't he, it wouldn't mean anything to him so like you know the significance of bestowing the 007 number back on to craig he wouldn't care it's us who would care you know yeah, it seems like an audience-pleasing move, which I have to admit did please me. But yeah, and, story-wise, and if she was, and if she was such a strong uh, uh, character, so capable and all this stuff, why, why not go through the whole movie with her as 007? Yeah, and another thing is, I'm missing the link where she starts respecting Bond to all of a sudden reinstated. Because I've, 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 I've made it a point to find the moment today, and I guess it's the moment because Bond tells her about the lead where to find Logan Ash. But when he tells her, like, yeah, you, you need to find this guy, uh, Logan Ash, and, and she's all annoyed, like, okay then? And then later she does find him, and all of a sudden she tells M, like, well, to be fair, uh, sir, it was mm -hmm. Command Commander Bond that, that got me the lead. It's like oh, so now the respect has grown, but oh. it's it's it, there doesn't seem to be a lot of build up to because she she goes from hating to oh I actually like him in, yeah. in like what seems like an instant. Yeah, their little um, I guess like their partnership or team up or it 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 was kind of rudimentary to me. It didn't it wasn't it wasn't like a big mind blowing. Oh, this is neat because like she's gonna learn something and like he'll learn to respect her and all that. It, it it just seemed like you know a by the numbers. Oh, we're not gonna like each other for a while. And then like oh, all of a sudden we're gonna like start to respect each other. Bond basically does her mission. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's <laughs> and then like dies for it. Uh, yeah. But it, it in fact, and this could this could be a good segue. I thought she was a pretty dumb double O agent. The moment when Bond is visiting Blofeld and Madeline's there and Madeline is in the bathroom putting on the perfume and you just saw the movie. So you could maybe like, you know, tell me if I'm wrong. She's putting on the poisonous perfume and like, she looks like unhinged Madeline. Like she's doing like the, almost like, yeah. like Stanley Kubrick eyes, like, you know, with clockwork yeah. orange or something like, you know, crazed eyes. And and Nomi's standing there in the bathroom, saying like, "Oh, you okay?" And like, I guess I, like, Madeline's like, "Oh yeah, okay." And she looks just possessed. And I yeah. was when I was when I first I only saw it once, but I was like the first time I was watching, I was like, "Doesn't Nomi notice anything kind of weird?" You know, weird? she should pick up on this. Like, <laughs> uh, this chick might not be okay, dear. Yeah, but it's, it's the same. Like, she has no idea why she doesn't give Bond a hand. She's yeah. all she says is like. Uh, Oh, does he have an effect on this uh, an old woman? I'm like, oh, come on, don't you get the cues? Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is the effect. Uh, yeah, and she's just so annoyed with Bond the whole time. But at least uh, we didn't get the whole tampon thing. No, oh, so like when you you, you said that um, the first time after you saw it, you thought there was a scene where they might have put the tampon in. So like, where they never it put it in, combat. I think. But I think she, you know, since she said in the interview, she suggested it to Carrie. I think it's in that scene in the bathroom, the oh. scene you just mentioned. Bathroom. I guess he was going to go come in and wanted to throw something in the bin well, when Madeline <laughs> was there. You know, I, guess, I mean, that's the only bathroom scene we get where she's yeah, actually in the ladies' room. So, you know, yeah. that must have been the moment. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you're probably yeah, right. That's, that's the first thing I t came in my mind. Oh, this was where she suggested to carry. This must have been the tampon moment. But uh, phew, I'm glad we didn't get that. Anyway, yeah. So, like, to sum up, uh, how would you rate her as a as a Bond girl, like a Bond this in the like the average, 
you know, um, above my expectations, which, which, you know, I have to admit were very low for her. Mm. So um, not as annoying, like I said. She had fun moments, but she was not nowhere near as fun and as classic a Bond girl, which she never was intended anyway, but as Paloma. Yeah. Um, but Madeline, too, that which we have to go over as well, I guess, again, um, stands out a lot more than her, too. Yeah. I mean, uh, for all the, the hype and buildup that they gave Nomi, uh, I would take Pam Bouvier over her <laughs> any day, like, yeah. Yeah, Wei Lin for me as well. That's Wei another. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she's similar to Wei Lin in a way, but Wei Lin just kicked so much more ass. I guess it's. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the other character we still need to mention is, I guess, the one we should have started with, the the big one, Madeline. Now we already discussed a lot of her in our story segment in the previous episode, but um, any any small. F- S- summary of, of her character this time around. Did you like her more, for example, compared to Spectre? Um, no, not really. But I, I have to say, though, I, I disagree with you here. I do like her more than in um, Spectre in this one. Yeah. She's um, actually, uh, she's pretty engaging in some moments, actually. I find her, um, I wouldn't say like one of the best uh, actresses, but I grew to appreciate her a lot more than I did in Spectre. She, uh, she does get a lot more room to, to play off. And some interesting angles to, to her character, which, uh, yeah, I, I like that. Although, you know, she's now actually kind of has this French background thing, which I think okay. Spectre was only an acro- uh, 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 you know, an accent. Mm-hmm. Now it actually seems like, oh, she's really a French, and she actually raises her kid in French, and uh, her mother was talking in French. Uh, which it's not that deep, but yeah, she 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 seemed more interesting to me, more like um, yeah, more well-rounded, more three-dimensional, um, and I liked her acting as well. She she seemed more emotional. I, I don't know. I see. I found her much more engaging this time I mean, around. Like, well, to her credit, like she's given a lot more to do, a lot more time on the screen. Yeah, and a lot she's more, pretty like, much the central. Play. The central character, um, but there's something about her, and it's just it's, she doesn't seem very charismatic on screen. Like when I see her, it's kind of like it, it, like a, a blank piece of paper. There's there's nothing really pulling me in to watch her. Like say like you compare her to uh, Paloma, who as soon as like you know she came on on the screen, like everything lit up. Right. Madeline, it just seemed very mundane, much the same as like she was in Spectre. She, she, she didn't engage me in any way. No matter like what they were giving her to play, whether like, she's uh, talking to the villain or she's uh, running from bad guys in the woods or shooting the gun or you know, professing her love to James Bond, she seemed very very bland in comparison to a lot of other Bond girls that they've had in the past. And I think it's kind of unfortunate. I mean, it's great that if you like her and everything, but I think it's kind of unfortunate that um, for such a significant Bond girl role, you could say that, like this is the most significant thing uh, since Vesper, uh, since Tracy. Like, this is a significant Bond girl role. They cast her, and it doesn't seem like her and Craig click in any way. And that that was a, a big problem with with the movie for me was I didn't buy their romance and if I don't buy their romance or think that this is the girl that James Bond should die for uh, it's kind of a problem. Um, yeah. I mean, could you could you name five Bond girls that you like more? I was like, I I could do it like you know no time at all you know um, you know you, you could easily name like probably like 15 if you want that's it's not she isn't yeah. she doesn't reach the heights of vesper and tracy um even though character wise she's supposed to be the third real love interest of bond the, the yeah. new one next to tracy and vesper 
Uh, and I guess you could say she's an updated version of Tracy. One of the, the, the arguments I would make for that is they both have a criminal father. You know, like Tracy okay. has a yeah. uh, Draco, you know. Um, so Bond always gets an, uh, a father-in-law that's, that's in crime. Uh, so that, that reminded me of, of Tracy a bit. But yeah, you're right. She doesn't reach those heights, but... I do find, you know, I do sense her emotions more, like when she opens the box to see the the, the mask, even though we saw it coming from the trailers and stuff, it's right. the tears rolling down her, you know, I do feel her more. I, I, I'm not necessarily that interested in, in uh, everything around her, but it does help that we get that little flashback of seeing her as a girl, which, by the way, that child actress did look a lot like a young Leia Seydoux. I didn't look up what the child actress is that plays the young Madeline. Yeah. But she does look, you know, you could totally imagine that's actually her being young. That was well casted. It does help that we get to see more of what her life was like as a child and how she grew up and how she became this, this damaged mother now. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not as negative as you know, Inspector. I I wasn't engaged by her at all. She was just eh, you know, she's there. You know, I I made this this inappropriate joke about her in, in my review, like yeah, you could do her, but you may as well not, which is kind of my my dumb <laughs> sense of humor sometimes. But I, what I meant by that is she seems pretty average, like yeah, you know, one of those. Eh. And here she. Right. She lifts it up more. I like her more, and I'm not annoyed when she's around. Um, and I, it gives Bond sort of a, a real character to care for and protect. So I, I, I do agree. The relationship misses some of that playfulness, like like he, like he had with Vesper, like the pillow fights and the mm-hmm. on the beds and stuff. You don't see any of the fun they have. But I do buy that these two. Yeah, they could be in love. Um, yeah, so I'm not as negative about her anymore. It's, but I knew going in that, like, oh, I wasn't keen on them bringing her back and from Spectre. And so I wasn't expecting a lot from her. I, I didn't think they could um, overhaul her character completely. They they really didn't for me. Um, I mean, I don't I, I I don't know how else to describe it, but there's something very I don't know vacant about her. Like there's something something hollow about that 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 character. Yeah. And I, I don't think like they as much as like oh uh, she's uh, she 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 has like this history and. Um, supposedly has this romance with bond like she loves him like 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 you said uh, i think in the last in the last episode like all of a sudden they were in love inspector like right when he's like you know strapped to the chair and everything yeah it didn't seem like an any kind of evolving <clears throat> relationship between those two and i know you can you can make the argument too like you know well like him and his romance with vesper I mean, how long were they in Montenegro? And all of a sudden, these two lo- love each other. I know it's like it's it, it's all, it, we're we're speeding down the highway pretty fast with like you know these yeah. relationships. Yeah. But at least I could, I, I enjoyed watching those two characters interact. Yeah, with, 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 with and, Vesper and Bond, you can pinpoint the falling in love bit a lot more, which I think comes in the shower when you know yeah. Th- that's when oh it yeah starts. yeah like when he he comforts her yeah that's yeah, yeah that's a good point. Yeah, and um, here it, yeah, you're right. There um, isn't really this moment I, where, like, out of the, and you just saw it. You just saw it. What, what was right. the great, like, a, a or, or a memorable moment between those two, like a romantic moment between those well, two? Well, I find um, the moment when Bond comes back to Norway after just hearing from Blofeld that. You know, Madeline didn't betray you. I did. It was all me, James. It was all me, James. Ah, mm-hmm. yes. Which I can't believe Bond fell for that and didn't question for a second. Like, oh, maybe, maybe, hey, maybe Madeline got framed. You know, not, because it seems in the car when he's ready to give up in the pre-title sequence, he looks at Madeline 
and and he's and she's like do something james do something and you see and he's like okay like there seems to be a moment of doubt like maybe he does trust her but nope he puts her on a train anyway you know get away with this girl and she betrayed me but then i find the moment strong where he comes back in norway and he confesses to her in her house like you know i i truly love you and i will love you again and you know i don't regret a second of seeing you like that five it felt like five minutes of my life but the only thing i regret is the moment on the train and it doesn't necessarily reflect much on leia's acting but i think the way craig delivered that despite being very unbondian it was convincing to me like he has his his tongue on his uh you know yeah to me that didn't seem as melodramatic as it might have looked on paper that was pretty powerful to me that cabin scene and I and you, I haven't seen the like I haven't seen the movie in like two weeks now. But in the cabin scene, one question: Do they have sex in that again? No, I don't think so because the child is. Um, That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, like, it doesn't. It's not implied that they do it again. Yeah, because initially, like we said, oh, the only sex was in Matera between those two. Right. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't remember. I was like, no, I don't think they had sex. It didn't seem because like they they had the kid they, right downstairs. Uh, yeah, he sleeps in the same bed with her though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and yeah. he actually wakes up to to Matilda like, yeah. And she says in French that she's hungry, and and yeah. Craig looks at her like, oh boy. Um, when you you watch this again, okay, um, they haven't seen each other in five years and all this, and like they're gonna start. Uh, he 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 trusts he's going to trust her or begin trusting her more. Why does she say that it's not his child? That Matilda is not her child. What What do you make of that? What is that all about? Yeah, I think she, um, she wants to protect Bond from, you know, or A, she's afraid Bond's going to, you know, pull the parachute and get out of there. Like, whoa, you didn't tell me any of this. You know, she doesn't know uh, what Bond is going to do with the information. So I guess he does, he's too afraid maybe to to mention it. But then later Safin mentions it to him. It is confusing. And it, yeah. and it's it's also, it, it, I, today, it got the audience behind me because I could hear them talk, you know, casual audiences. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, and she does the line, don't worry, it's not yours. And, and I could hear a woman behind me like, like oh, oh that's good you, know, you could hear them like oh it's not his okay <laughs> and it's like well it is lady <laughs> you know i was almost gonna turn over like oh yeah. yeah he is in fact a father uh, it, it, it that that is a um i think it's one of those lines in the series that i'm gonna just be scratching my head over forever i don't understand why she doesn't it also might might also be more for us as the audience to keep the secret for a little longer uh, that that in fact it is Bond's child but why not say it again you know immediately well, when then, when she pops up and the little toy comes down the stairs like yep this is this is yours but then like why so are they is this really um what kind of love is between these two if like he's she's still She's, he says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you from now on, essentially, like at the cabin. And she, she lies to him again. Yeah. It's kind of strange. I, I don't really understand. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah. maybe people have some theories about it, but I, I just don't understand. And what, for just to get a cheap joke of like, uh, what I got to show you something. What, not another child? Is, was that the reason for her to say that? You could still like, make that joke. Even if it is your, uh, it would probably yeah, be true. just as funny. So it's true. Um, um, yeah, it, it it was it was it was strange. It, it, I I'll have to watch it. Uh, obviously, I'll watch the movie again at some point. But I I just didn't understand that, like why she wouldn't just say it. Um, there's a lot of confusing stuff in the movie. Yeah. Like, but like, um, I want to add like you think like we've covered all the bond girls there's a fourth one that we should talk about which you just kind of brought up there is <laughs> he's got a daughter 
Oh, the daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's a yeah, Bond that, girl, isn't she? <laughs> she is a technically. That, that, can, can there was a there was a, a a meme some of, a friend of mine made where it's like the Bond girl you were hoping for, and you see Anna the Armors, and then the Bond girl you get, and then you see <laughs> Matilda, and like with the little cuddle. It's like, it's uh, like yeah. Um, we could we could discuss her as well. Um, yeah, might as well. Like we already start touching on her anyway. Yeah, take take her away. Um, what, you know, what do we think of Mat- Matilde? Matilde. I I do. You know, they did cast a cute child for her. Um, the writing with it was fun, despite it being very unnatural to us to watch Bond cut an apple in the morning and take care of this child. Yeah. Um. How great would that have been if he started mixing her a martini? Yeah, <laughs> that would have actually, been, you know, that could have been, that could have worked. And you could have seen Madeline like, "What are you doing?" Like, well, <laughs> may as well start the day with something strong. <laughs> this is another thing I'm not as negative about that the child. I mean, fair enough. This is the last of the Craig movies. You know, if you're gonna do it, you can only do it here. Because imagine starting a new Bond movie where you already have this baggage of him having a child and being a family guy. Okay. So, but I did like what they did with the few moments he's in, especially the, the, the thing that touches me, I guess a little bit is again, I cannot imagine other Bond actors doing this, but when the, the cuddle, the, what you were the stuffed animal when that that's on do, the floor in the, do, do, yeah, do, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. The, that's in the villain layer. And Bond picks it up and looks at it, even though he didn't get to bring it to her. But still, it is heartwarming, I guess. Um, you can see in Bond's eyes, like, he needs, this is his job now. I mean, there is a new responsibility for him to protect. He, also in the Safin scene, where he does the weird bowing, which I'm still not a fan of, by the way, mm. where he seems to be begging for him. But most of it, yeah, Matilda. Tilled. Yeah, pretty pretty decent. Um, there were there was this theory that she was named Matilda because of Roald Dahl. I think that's oh. a bit far fetched. But hmm. anyway, what do you make of her? I'm very um, curious to hear this actually. <laughs> she, I I thought um, the whole idea of like um, okay, a child. All right, I think they added Matilda to give the relationship between him and Madeline more weight. She, she, she kind of like, uh, they added that, the, the, the child element to, to weigh the scale down a little bit more saying like, Oh, see, look, he, he, he's got a lot going. He's got to sacrifice a lot. He does want to risk, uh, killing, um, Matilda and Madeline. He's got to like, you know, die on that Island. I, I think they, yeah, they added that just because they knew it, it, it was going to be tough to convince us Madeline was something or someone to worth dying for. He said, well, we got to do something else. Let's give her a kid. Let's give her Bond's kid. Now, now, like, you know, uh, that's going to add some, some weight to this uh, decision that he's got at the end. Mm. And uh, we'll, uh, it'll be a lot more convincing. Like that's, that's the choice he's got to make. Um, so I, I didn't really, too much of the uh, the daughter. It's funny because like after the ending, uh, the daughter thing is almost like forgotten. <laughs> I mean, uh, the big ending with him, which I never thought I would see. Like you know, in, James Bond dying holding a stuffed bunny. Like it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it was just a just a provide a little bit more emotional weight that uh, Madeline wasn't uh, bringing to the table. Yeah. Um, and so like, I didn't I didn't think too much of it. Um, it, it. Okay, you just saw it. There was one little scene after Norway I didn't get. The, the kids saying something about, do mosquitoes have friends? What are the mosquitoes? At first I, yeah. I didn't... At first, I thought she 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 was talking about like there was little nanobots on her or something. Like, uh, what 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 is the mosquito thing? Was there was there some I missed? I I didn't understand where that came from. I, like, what is she talking about? No idea. 
I really don't have an idea. It's I saw it again just now, but I think it's just a throwaway line. I guess yeah. it's um, which you know she's a child, so she could have lines like that. She just seems to be you know saying innocent stuff. Like, do mosquitoes have friends? And then and then in French, Madeline answers with I I don't know. And and then the cars come up from the jeeps, yeah. the uh, the Land Rovers, whatever. Um, uh, but. I don't think it has any. I didn't even think of nanobots or yeah, anything. Yeah, I thought like maybe she she was getting nanobots on her from Bond or something. Like, I was like, oh, is that what she thinks that is? Like, it's mosquito. Like, but I guess not. She's yeah. Oh, um, yeah. well, um, out of the uh, the uh, Bond girls in this movie, Paloma gets all my applause. Paloma, it is. 